Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is how do you read a pressure temperature chart and why is it so important to the HVACR tree? Just so you know, you actually have a pressure temperature chart on your gauges themselves. I'm going to show you how to read your pressure temperature chart here, and I'm going to be going over how you utilize your gauges for your pressure temperature chart. So the pressure temperature relationship can be found right here on a pressure temperature chart. It can be found on the gauges because there's the outer ring with the pressure and then a temperature inner ring for, in this case, it's green. Light green is R22. Light pink or rose is R410A. And you have orange here is R404A. So you actually have a pressure temperature chart built into the gauge set with the outer ring being pressure. The reason that we use this is saturated temperature, which is what is found on a pressure temperature chart, means that you have liquid and vapor both at the same time, and therefore you can figure out a actual temperature for any certain pressure. So if you take a bottle of uh, 410A refrigerant, if it is 70 degrees in the room, then you should have about 200 PSIG on the bottle. So if you measure what the pressure of the bottle is and the bottle is at 70 degrees, then you should get right around 200 PSIG. Likewise, if it's R22, then in this case, it is 60, almost 68 degrees in the room right here. And right now we're hooked up to a R22 bottle, and you see that it's actually about 68 degrees on this gauge and on the low side gauge. Likewise, if you're attaching your gauge set to an outdoor uh, condenser, outdoor heat pump, and it's been off for say half an hour, the refrigerants have been equalized, uh, which means that when an air conditioning system shuts off, that this pressure, which is the high side, this, this gauge right here is the high side gauge, this is the low side gauge, uh, what happens is when you when the compressor shuts off, this pressure will decrease and this pressure will increase and and until they meet at the same pressure. So as long as you hook up your low side vapor suction gauge and your high side liquid gauge and they're reading the same temperature, what you can do is you can figure out what refrigerant is in the system with the unit off. Then you just take a temperature reading outside and you can determine what refrigerants in the bottle. So say it's 68 degrees outside and right here on your gauge it reads 68 degrees for R22. Well it's certainly not going to be R410A because it's not 40 degrees outside and it's not going to be R404A because it's not 56 degrees outside. So the only thing that matches here is R22 at 70 degrees. You just have to figure out, say, an average of what the outdoor temperature is, because that's where your outdoor unit's located at, and that's where the refrigerant's located at, and uh, also include the temperature over at your indoor evaporator coil. So if it's 80 degrees where your evaporator coil is, and say it's 70 degrees outside where your outdoor unit is, uh, then it would be acceptable to have a little bit of a higher temperature, saturated temperature, than what the outside air is. Then that would still show you that you had R22 in that system. It should actually be pretty darn close to what the outdoor temperature is, uh, but you do want to take into account where the evaporator coil is because that temperature, if it's higher, it will actually exert more pressure all the way out towards the outdoor unit. But that's how you tell what refrigerants in a system if you hook the gauges up and the refrigerant is equalized on both the high and the low side. As well, you can determine if there are contaminants in the system like air or nitrogen. If the temperature, the saturated temperature, does not align to what it should be outside or wherever the uh, condenser ports are located at, if it does not align to uh, a certain refrigerant like R22, for instance, right now is reading 68 degrees at a pressure of about 117 PSIG, you know that it's higher temperature than, say, 40 degrees. So you know it's not R410A refrigerant. Likewise, you also know that it's not R404 refrigerant 
because it's higher than 57 degrees outside. But just say the pressure was higher. Say it was at 85 uh, degrees saturated temperature right here, and it was only 70 degrees outside, and the evaporator coil was only at, say, 76 or maybe 80 degrees. If this saturated temperature right here was higher than both of them, then that means that you don't have R22 in that system. Or maybe you have R22 mixed with nitrogen or air. So now let's go ahead and look at your pressure temperature chart. Because you might have a gauge set that, that does not have all the different types of refrigerant uh, that you have to be working with. Although you do want to have a refrigerant gauge set for each type of refrigerant so you, that you don't have uh, cross-contamination of the, of the oil from the refrigerants. So we're going to go ahead and look at this. This is a Sporlin pressure temperature chart, and it says at sea level. So right here you have 0 psi g. Okay, Below that you have inch hg, which is usually in the green right here. So this right here is an inch hg. Right at 0, that's 0 psi g, and then that would be close to about 10 psi g right there. Okay. So anything on this pressure temperature chart that has an asterisk next to it is talking about inch hg. So 5 inch hg, that's what that reads right there. This is 0, and then from then on it's psig. 0 psig is equal to 14.7 psia. That is pounds per square inch absolute. psig is pounds per square inch gauge. So 0 PSIG equals 14.7 PSIA, and we basically are zeroing the scale of our gauge at 0 just to make it less confusing. All right, on this pressure temperature chart, it says PSIG on the left-hand side. Sometimes they have temperature on the left-hand side. Uh, you just want to make sure before you start looking at it just to make sure what you got there on the left. All right, uh, you see the second column, we have R22. Fourth column, we have R410A. Third column, 134A. Uh, we're going to go ahead and look at 117 PSIG because that's what we had on our gauges. So we're going to follow this down. And right here, in between 115 and 120, is what we're looking at in R22. If we bring it in, right between here, 67 and 69, we see it will be 68 degrees at about 117 PSIG. So if we had 117 PSIG and we brought that in over to R4 tonight, then we're looking at about 39 degrees. So remember that this is the saturated temperature of the refrigerant. This is when you have liquid and vapor both existing at the same time in, in the same area. So now, why is that important? It's important to us as technicians because we need the saturated temperature of a refrigerant when we're reading the high side gauge to check the refrigerant charge of a system that has a thermostatic expansion valve like this. That's in order to check the refrigerant charge. We also need to know the saturated temperature of a refrigerant for a system that has a piston in it because we would be checking superheat with our low side gauge. What we're going to find is we're going to find that the temperature on the vapor line right near the outdoor unit should be higher than whatever the saturated temperature is on this gauge right here. Likewise, if we were to check the refrigerant charge during the subcooling process, the temperature on the line right next to where we're hooking the gauge up at should be lower. This temperature will be lower than whatever it says on this gauge right here as a saturated temperature. And that temperature decrease between here and here is called the subcooling. The temperature increase between this large tube, which is a suction line, and this temperature on the gauge right here, which is a saturated temperature, that's called the superheat. And that is the temperature increase in vapor form. So you see that we use the saturated temperature of a refrigerant with the system off. We use the saturated temperature of the refrigerant during the subcooling process with the high side liquid gauge. We use the saturated temperature of the refrigerant in the low side gauge right here, which is also the suction and vapor during the superheat process. Now we can tell if there's any contaminants in the system. Uh, while the system's running, maybe you have an R22 system and it's at, say, 280 PSIG, and then it comes back up to 320 PSIG, and then it goes back down to, 300, to 280 PSIG. 
if you suspect that there's some type of a problem with the system, maybe that there's air in the line or nitrogen, maybe from somebody not doing a proper evacuation, uh, you know, vacuum pumping of the system before they release the refrigerant into it, then what you can do is you can shut the system off and then check your saturated refrigerant temperature versus your outside temperature. But anyway, that's how you do it. So you're, you have a pressure temperature chart on the gauges. We use these with the system off and when the system's running. We use it for the superheat process, for the subcooling process, and uh, it's very important to know how to do that. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.